I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. We are here for round number three at the 2015 Maple Hill Open with Paul McBeth in the lead at 17 under par. I'd like to thank AJ Risley for doing all of the filming and co-commentating for the first two rounds. However, now I'm home, I'm producing these videos for you alone. We're going to go to Steve Dodge live on hole number one for the call. We are live on the box on our two o'clock lead card. Teeing off first, three-time world champion, one-time Vibram Open champion, Paul McBeth. Paul McBeth here on the tee. He's got a star destroyer that he's gonna make sure he puts more than enough movement on to make sure he gets over the pond here on hole number one. Most players will tell you it throws a little over 400 feet to make sure you clear the water. Teeing off second on our lead card, 2012 Player of the Year, Japan Open champion, Ricky Waisaki. And of course, Ricky Waisaki has been so close for these previous few years, trying to hunt down his first Maple Hill Open victory. Seeing off third on our lead card, six-time NorCal champion, Greg Barsby. And Greg Barsby, one of the most lovable guys on the tour, recently picked up by Innova Dis. And that is turning over. However, it looks like it's going to hook up near the end. Great shot by Barsby. And rounding out our lead card, one-time distance world champion throwing over 850 feet, David Wiggins. With throws recorded of over 850 feet, David Wiggins should have no problem clearing this pond. It's a matter of what position he's gonna find himself in. Waisaki with a great angle at the basket being on that higher left hand side. And Barsby seemingly a little bit more conservative as he had a slight turnover there. Macbeth is going to go at this hard and gets a good roll out. However, he definitely missed the gap he was going for. He's looking to slide that right into the mouth of the peninsula there. Wiggins with a turnover. And Macbeth knew about halfway there that it was not on the right line. Parsby with a huge putt. It's a great way to get your round started. Birdie on hole number one. This is Wiggins just a bit short. And Ricky Waisaki also just a bit short. I swear there is something with hole number one and people coming up just short on their pots. Like Beth had tapped in and we see three pars and the birdie by Greg Barsby. Barsby on the tee here. I believe that is a, an eagle. I could be mistaken. I know Paul McBeth is throwing a champion version PB. It feels like this is one of his favorite and strongest holes out here. He's parked it on days one and two. That one's a little short. And Waisaki gets it dialed in. Just a bit short. Good looking shot though. Wiggins busting out a roller here. Fights through. Easy up and down here for Macbeth. Looks like he'll be starting par par. 
and Wiggins' roller had gotten him to pin high, but just short. Farsby with another solid putt. Two holes, two solid putts, two birdies. Greg Barsby off to a great start. Saki also with a birdie. And Wiggins and Macbeth will have to settle for their pars. Gorgeous looking shot. He's going to pot at the basket. We'll see how much of a skip he gets. Ricky with a lower shot. Macbeth says this is one of his favorite holes as he knows as soon as you release the disc, you know if you've thrown a great shot or not. And he's on that left hand side. Certainly short of being a great shot. Wiggins carries nicely, gets a little kiss off the tree. Waisaki with some magic forehand skills. Roller's going to put him up near the basket. Paul with not much of a look other than laying up for three. Wiggins capitalizes on the birdie two opportunity. up for Waisaki. Great up and down. And he's going to be happy. That is three holes and three birdies here during round three. Meanwhile, Paul Macbeth has started with three consecutive pars. We see that gap closing. Barsby within two of Macbeth and Waisaki in the middle. Just one back. Barsby's forehand gets caught up. Wiggins right up the gut, no problems. This is Waisaki. I think those were jazz hands. And he's happy with his shield forehand shot. And Macbeth finally gets past the early trees. Rounds one and two, he did not. Barsby with a slight misfire there. Come on. And from one knee, Macbeth is short and left. So I say just misfired slightly left. Barsby's going to clean up for the three. As does Macbeth. This is the shortest hole on the course, 250 feet. Also has a ton of trees and a very tight corridor and OB long in the pond. But Waisaki and Wiggins are all right by that. They're both carting birdie twos, Macbeth and Barsby with the threes. We see Waisaki get his first share of the lead here, tying it up on hole four. Wiggins with a forehand. I believe Waisaki's throwing a felon forehand. Barsby with a old school pro line banshee. And this is Macbeth with a backhand Nova. Flag. Obstructed putt for Wiggins. Barsby with the easy deuce pickup as well as Paul Macbeth. Wiggins will tap in for his par. 
and Waisaki for the easy birdie. So three birdies and a par on hole number five. And a view of the OB pond, which comes into play on a number of other holes. And in just a few moments on both six and eight, we will see that same pond. Another forehand shot by Waisaki. He hits that left hand gap and it skips up into the island trees. That's not a bad place to be if you can penetrate through those. Barsby's approach is a little more direct, going with the right channel. Macbeth throwing a McRock. McPro Rock 3, I should say. After a whole weekend of saying that, that can be a little challenging. And Wiggins with a forehand. Here is Macbeth for a birdie two here on hole six. Come on. Uphill putt is wide right. Yeah. Ricky to take the outright lead here on hole number six. This is an amazing birdie. Yeah. Be birdies as does Wiggins. Most players are happy just to card threes on this hole. During this third round, we see three birdies and a par. I can guarantee you three down out of four players on that hole. That was the best that hole was played at any point this entire weekend. Oisaki going up the gut, however, catches Tree on the left-hand side. And Barsby seems to have held on just too long right out of his hand. It does carry further than... He was probably expecting, but that's going to get a kick. Seems as if Wiggins had a little too much turnover right out of his hands as well. This is Macbeth throwing a star T-Bird with a Macbeth AVR stamp on it. Simple forehand, making it look easy is Wiggins. Waisaki as well. Everyone at home should be taking notes. If you want to make trouble shots look easy, practice those forehands. Barsby with a solid approach. Paul Macbeth has a long jump putt here for the birdie two. And no good. He's going to remain just one down through the first seven holes. Not the start Macbeth is looking for here in round three. Barsby and Wiggins, along with Waisaki, are all going to tap in for their pars. Hole 7 not relinquishing very many birdies here, and none to this group, which is somewhat rare. We're going to move over to the beautiful pond shot on hole number 8. 320 feet, approximately 10 feet short of the green is pond, and 10 feet off of the tee area is pond so you're looking about 290 to 300 feet of water to clear great shot by barsby as well as waisaki this is david wiggins with a putter oh and he comes up just a bit short little pocket of water over there anywhere else left or right of that and he would have been cleared and Macbeth with a champion thunderbird wiggins Gets up and fires pretty quickly from the drop zone. He's going to be looking at a penalty four. We see Smashbox cameraman covered to myself. That is not me, but Paul McBath making good on the two. That was Todd Dodge on the camera for Smashbox. Barsby's into two. As is Waisaki. And Wiggins... Ruining the star frame in the in a hard way. We've got three birdies and a bogey by David Wiggins. We're going to move to hole number nine. It is considered a par three. However, it will certainly play more like a four for these competitors, for all competitors throughout the week and throughout the years. Great forehand shot by Waisaki. Barsby also going with a forehand shot. That looks pretty clean. That is Joe Height in the right-hand side. He's the secondary camera for Smashbox TV. 
and Macbeth who had hit an early tree on the left hand side each round switches up to a Mako 3 and instead hits a different tree coming through here and a good looking shot there by David Wiggins catches a late tree but he's up and over the hillside which is what you're looking to do this is Macbeth he'll have a turnover shot trying to attack the green on the bottom right and it looks like he just may have hung it up too long and it filters down into the gallery I was told it didn't hit any members of the gallery however it did stop inbounds Wiggins has a very long jump putt that puts him on the island green anytime you can find yourself on that green after two shots you are doing something very right as does Greg Barsby right there. Great shot by Barsby. Waisaki has a birdie attempt here. <laughs> and no, that's not another dance move. Waisaki, unfortunately, just finds himself in the center of that little creek that's down there and kind of trips on himself. Thankfully, he's okay. He had a smile on his face immediately after it. He should be smiling as he's in the lead over Macbeth. Macbeth now is putting for three. And he comes up short. Wiggins is in for the three. Anytime you can see a three on this hole, again, I know these players are more than content with carting a par. Barsby's done just that. Macbeth taking a bogey. That may be the third round in a row he has bogeyed this hole. And Ricky Waisaki taps in. Those are the front nine of round three.